What it is, what it do, cyber world. It is your girl, the one and only Ash Said It, Ash Said It.com, Ash Said It.com, baby babies. Thank you so much for continuing to support the movement, which is the Ash Said It daily podcast show. You guys never know who may come through to the show. So today's guest, you guys have seen his his very debonair, his gorgeous mug across your television screen multitude of times through different shows like Law and & Order, NCIS, Criminal Minds, the one and only Juan Javier Cardenas. Juan, how are you? I, I don't know what I can say after that amazing introduction. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm amazed that that's the, most, that's the most wonderful introduction I've ever had Aww. in a very long time, Ash. Yeah. So thank you very much. Yeah, I, I very much appreciate it. Awesome. Doing? I'm doing pretty awesome, and I, I know that you're you're a busy man. You know, being on one of the hottest television programs. You know, this this whole summer, blazing hot. <laughs> <laughs> Well, we're trying. We're, we're trying. And you know what? We're really happy because so far um, the response to, to the series has been overwhelmingly positive from my point of view. Yeah. Uh, we've been able to do a lot of uh, really fun promotional uh, things for the show, which I believe you, you told me that you came to the Atlanta screening. I um, did. Go to two Texas screenings. We also had one in Los Angeles. And, uh, of course, it's great to hear people on social media talk about the show, but it's really something else to have people flesh and blood come after screening, stay behind, want to talk with the creators, want to talk with yeah. the actors, and express how much they enjoyed it. And you can't ask for anything more as a performer, you know? Absolutely. So, Juan, let our audience know, where are you from? Where do you represent? I I am a Florida native, Ooh. born and bred, which uh, is, uh, we're, we're, we're not a lot, but I'm actually <laughs> a Florida native. I'm from... I'm from Florida, from Central Florida. I'm the first, uh, like a lot of kids, I'm the first American son of uh, parents from Puerto Rico and from Cuba. Um, okay. I studied and I grew up in Florida my whole life. In fact, I went to the University of Florida where I studied theater. Then I transferred over to the Florida State University graduate program, studying in a conservatory down in Southwest Florida in the Gulf Coast. And for a while, I was based out of New York, but now I'm enjoying sunny California away from the humidity, which is a, a nice break. <laughs> I can imagine. I can imagine that. So how did you find out about the Snowfall Project? Um, my my way that I found my way into Snowfall was actually kind of quite normal for most, uh, for most performers. What happens is that when you're a performer living in Los Angeles or in New York or any kind of regional area, you typically have representation that make you notified about auditions or notices of productions that are coming down the pipe. And I had just began working with the representatives that I'm working with now. And when I signed up with them, when I had one of my first meetings, I remember sitting in a meeting with them and speaking with all of them. And they asked me, they're like, you know, what kind of projects do you see yourself being interested in? What are things that kind of speak to you? And I remember very specifically being in the meeting, I go, what I want to do is I want to be a part of this really incredible renaissance of television that we're experiencing right now in popular culture where the writing is consistently pushing boundaries, the characters are developed. I want to be a part of a show that has a great longevity and incredible story arc with complicated characters mm -hmm. in like an hour and a half structure on one of the most <laughs> premier cable networks. And I would that's what I would love to do. That's that's what I see myself. And literally like a month after that Snowfall came in, the notices for Snowfall came in, and I'm like, yes, 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 yes please, 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 that, that's me. Yeah, confirm, confirm appointment. And um, it, was, it was everything, you know, it was everything that, that, that I was interested at the time. And uh, the number one thing I think most performers will say is that you get a sigh of relief if you get the material. If mm -hmm. you, get, you, get, you get snippets of the material, you know, a lot right. of stuff was hush-hush when we were doing the audition process. You yeah. know, we only had the material of the first pilot, you know, and no kind of greater context for how the show would get to go. But you can, you can imagine, you know, yeah. like the relief, like when you get that material and you see the intelligence behind it and you see the character development and it was exciting. You always want to go into appointments or you always want to go into chances to audition being very excited about the project. Mm -hmm. Not that we don't always get that opportunity, but that's what the opportunity was laid before me. And that's how I came to it. Very, you know, just very, very usual, like everybody else. I went and I, you know, went out like everybody else for it. And, you know, gratefully that it worked out. Absolutely. Now, um, during the screening in Atlanta, John Singleton shared that the project um, from start to, to now being released, it took a sum of a little over three years. 
So in that three-year period, where did you fall into the project? Were, were you in the early stages or? No, I wasn't. The, the, the history of Snowfall is a very interesting one, and I'm really glad that uh, Mr. Singleton got a chance to speak about it because what that happen, what that, what happens when people speak, when the creators kind of talk about like the genesis of, of these kind of projects, what I like about that is that it gives the audience like a greater audience and understanding of the amount of work and the amount of time and the amount yeah. of patience it takes mm -hmm. for when people that are very uh, passionate about a creative project to get it to get it onto the screen or to get into a theater or to get it distributed or even to get a, a movie or a television show made. It's a really long process, and there's a lot of pitfalls along the way. Now, I can only speak to my experience, and I was I was part of Snowfall towards the end of it when where we are now. You know, mm -hmm. when we had had a, like a new pilot, and it was and it was going forward. But I do know a bit about the earlier incarnations of the project that I'm sure Singleton touched on. Right. But I can say, for instance, there was an original incarnation of the Snowfall pilot. There was an, another incarnation of the cast. It, it did exist before, and right. uh, FX, they were able to produce an original pilot. Um, and it came down into the conversations where the pilot was not exactly uh, where the people that were involved in, uh, where they wanted the show to be, or what kind of show they wanted it to be. And they had to redo a lot of it. They, they started over from scratch. Not everybody, as far as performance, uh, performers or characters, have translated into the, into the new pilot, into the series that you're watching now. The only people uh, that I know that were involved, as far as performers, from that original incarnation of Snowfall, was Damson, who of course is an, mm -hmm. the amazing actor who plays uh, Franklin Singh, and Sergio, who plays Gustavo, or also the Luchador. Mm -hmm. So speaking with those speaking with those actors on set, when I had the chances to work with them, it was really an interesting perspective to hearing them to talk to them and understand how the project had changed from when they were involved with it until now. Um, and of course, you know, I wasn't there at the beginning, but you know, uh, hey, I'm very glad to be part of it now. And um, so I'm, I, you know, I really give it to FX. I, I appreciate that they went for a second round because this kind of source material, I think, was very important to the people that were involved, particularly to John Singleton. And I think the overwhelming consensus is that if we're going to do a project like this, we want to do it right and want to come correct. And that's what I think we did. Definitely. So were you, had you encountered John Singleton prior to Snowfall? No, never. Oh, like, uh, like, like meeting him. Like no, meeting him, never, and like, never, never. <laughs> never, never. The first time I ever met him was like the first episode, like one of the, the first. Um, what, yeah, okay, so really quickly about how Snowfall Snowfall works, which is really nice, but it'll tie into the first meeting John Singleton. Mm -hmm. Is that Snowfall? Uh, to the people who haven't seen it yet, Snowfall works. Uh, it's like a multi-character drama, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a, there's a lot of characters in the yeah. show, and part of the fun is that you follow different storylines you know, uh, that center around different communities in Los Angeles. So there's about like 12, I'd say 12, I think you could safely say like yeah. 12 main characters on the show. So it's a big cast. Yeah. But the storylines, depending on when you're tuning in, don't always intersect on mm. time. But what FX did and what they made it an imperative to do was that at the start of every filming for the new episode, they invited the entire cast to sit around a table and read the scripts all together. Mm. which was amazing yes. because it really fostered a bond between the actors. It made us feel like we were part of a theater, like a theater company, a company of actors that we were all together on this. And it was during one of those readings. That was one of the first times that, yes, I met John Singleton. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and of course, uh, reputations, you know, of course, precede people. Yeah. Um, I had been a fan of uh, John Singleton's for, for, for many, many years. You know, obviously, Boys in the Hood, Higher Learning, Baby Boy. Absolutely. Um, and, he, it was something to, I think I can speak for, I think I can speak for a lot of actors um, when I say that the excitement, uh, part of the excitement with Snowfall is that we were doing something new, but knowing that we were working with people that had been the vanguard of new American cinema in the last 30 years, yeah. you know, you want to, you want to be, you know, iron sharp, sharpens iron, as they say, you know, you want to be with people that are continuously pushing the envelope and continually pushing the culture and the art forward. And that's what the excitement, of course, was being able to work on a John Singleton project. And knowing that that at every step of the level, like I said before, there would be a lot of great care taken mm -hmm. to the source material because of the personal connection, of course, that Mr. Singleton has to the, uh, to the era and, of course, where the show takes place. Um, but as a person, I mean, he kind of <laughs> <laughs> there's something that when you meet people, when you meet people that are very esteemed, you you, you always want them, you know, to, to, to you always want to speak with them as if yeah. they're people. And of course, Mr. Singleton, of course, was exactly that. He'd come over, you know, bump you on the shoulder and go, "Hey, nice to meet you. How you doing?" Da, 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 da. And he walked by, and within five seconds, you realize, "Oh, I just met John. Hey, John, oh, that's that was John too." Okay, <laughs> hey, sir, how you doing? Da, da, da. 
again. But um, but I, I, from my perspective, in my experience, there was never a point on set where there was any kind of errors as far as who is this, who is that. Everybody there was a, there was a very you know strong communal um, feeling that listen, we're all in this together. We're creating a piece of art together. Um, let's just get to work. So right. um, from my perspective, I saw people as colleagues, you know, as, as opposed to kind of a hierarchical structure. And, right. like that. and that was definitely, I think, a, an environment that was pushed for, particularly by Mr. Singleton and other people. You know, absolutely. So you play Alejandro. And uh, yes. Alejandro has a very, I mean, every character has their own specific, like they're, like you said, the, the cast itself, every one character holds something special to the story and adds a, a yeah. different flavor to the entire project itself. But as you were building this character, Alejandro, were there anything, was there anything that came to mind for you that you were unaware of as far as this crack cocaine epidemic that was happening in the 80s. Sure. The, what was happening in the 80s with, with crack cocaine and the kind of the, what was going on in the world, you know, politically, geopolitically around it was something that I was aware of through, you know, high school and through college, things that I had known about. But of course, nothing compares to when you're, mm. when you're thrust into something where you, where it's, you have to take it upon yourself to study the history and you have to get aware of what was going on because yeah. the more that you understand the kind of context of what's going on, the, the easier it is to play the material because you understand the stakes involved right. and the way that uh, the way that each scene, how that relates to kind of the goings on around the character. So to give a really quick kind of like premiere on, on who Alejandro is, just very quickly for people who haven't seen the show. So Alejandro Ustedes is... Uh, along with uh, Carter Hudson, the actor Carter Hudson, who plays Teddy McDonald, who's kind of a rogue, is a rogue CIA mm -hmm. agent. They, 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 they incorporate the part of the story of the '80s in Los Angeles dealing with the Iran Contra scandal. And in a nutshell, what that was is that it's still a very controversial, uh, controversial time and controversial subject. Um, but what it basically involves my character is that I play a counter-revolutionary um, Contra fighter from Nicaragua, basically. These were extreme, an extremely violent counter-revolutionary group uh, that had been exiled from Nicaragua that had just gone through a very intense and a very violent civil war. So I come to the United States with the ability to funnel cocaine from Central and South America into the United States with the point of selling it into the populace of, the, of Los Angeles for the point of uh, taking the funds from that to fund the Contra war that I support and I'm and I'm eliciting the aid of Teddy McDonald, the rogue CIA officer, to help me with the structure and with the production so that I can facilitate these kind of drug dealings in the United States without getting pinched by the DEA or without being hounded by the FBI. So in a nutshell, you know, you're talking about somebody in, in the case of Alejandro that is a that is an incredibly severe, you know, political extremist that really does function under the adage of the mean, uh, the ends justify the means which is a very cold and calculated way that he sees the world. This is not, a, you know, on paper, a sympathetic character. This is not a character that, you know, people, when they learn a little bit about it, and as the, and as the show goes by, um, it's going to be very interesting when you delve into exactly what this character has been involved in, you know, south of the border as far as what his troops have been involved in with the general populace of the country that he comes from. But what I think Snowfall does, and what I think it really challenges uh, the watcher, is to go along on a ride with these kind of characters and try to at least understand their point of view, what their motivations are for doing what they do, and coming to an understanding of what they're trying to achieve. Now, of course, <laughs> I have to say that no one that I know personally or nobody that's been involved in my family or anything like that has gone to the links of somebody like Alejandro to accomplish what they want politically. But when you ask me, is there any ways, you know, that I could possibly find a connection with somebody like this? You know, my family is from the Caribbean. My father is from Cuba. You know, my father's family comes from a very troubled country that had their own revolution and their own political turmoil. So mm -hmm. when I got the character of Alejandro, what I could, the through line that I could at least latch on to, to try to understand this person's point of view, not understanding the person's methods, obviously, but understanding mm. where this person has come from is that I, I understand a sense of the sense of exile that mm. certain people from certain countries have that are escaping politically disastrous countries, you know, fa leading you know failed states in a way where the status quo, the status quo that they're that they're used to has been upended, and the world that they know it has been taken out from underneath them. So, 
Um, in that regard, so in that regard, I could try to find like a like a through line into finding out a way to play his character. And it's it's tough. It's tough when you play. It's tough when you play people like this because you you can't immediately judge judge a character. I know it's a very cliche thing for performers to say, mm-hmm. but if you immediately kind of put a judgment call on that performer, you're kind of stepping out already away yeah. from understanding and from playing it. And the strength that you know the the really severe and the frightening thing about somebody like Alejandro Ustedes is this person is a true believer. Mm-hmm. You know, he doesn't. He, what this person is doing and what is alleged that the people that work underneath him as done are were tantamount to war crimes in his own country. Yeah. But this person, you have to understand, is that this person does not see himself as a terrorist. This person does not see himself as a war criminal. This person sees himself as a patriot. Mm. And he's a true believer. And he's somebody that feels that I'm getting my country back. Mm. When you deal with individuals like that, that deal with that kind of absolute worldview, it's a very scary and a very dangerous predicament to be with somebody like that because that person typically they will stop at nothing to regain what they feel they feel they've unjustly yeah. lost mm. so i mean so you know the part that i'm involved in in snowfall you know it, it, it can be very it can be very severe especially about all these things that i'm just talking about but but on top of that snowfall itself i think is a very engaging show and there are moments of lightness in it of course mm-hmm. and you know, we can understand the kind of the politics and the history that was going around a lot of these characters, but what's beautiful about Snowfall is that when you watch the show, it, it boils it down to the relationships between people. And essentially, with where I do, what I'm doing in Snowfall, it's the story of this guy Alejandro working with this guy Teddy. Mm. Two backgrounds, two very opposite worlds, but they have the same goal in mind. They want to achieve the same things. They're, they're politically on the same side. So it's about two people that should never be in a room with each other, mm-hmm. compromising themselves, compromising their morals and stepping over gray moral lines without any care to the ramifications of what's going to happen to these communities, without any care of what's going to happen to this, to this, to this city, what's going to happen to this state, because they're so focused on their goal. But you see these people kind of stumble. It's kind of a dark, <laughs> unholy marriage between these two people. And, but hopefully it's engaging, you know, even with all that incorporated. And hopefully people watch and, and they take something from it. I, I hope they do. Absolutely, because I'm looking forward to it now. Like I said, after the first screening, yeah. you know, I was just like yeah. salivating at the mouth. I'm like, oh, my God. See, I'm seeing parts of Alejandro. I'm seeing like the onion peel back a little bit. Not too much, yeah. but we're seeing it peel back a little bit. So I'm yeah, super excited tell, about that. Yeah. <laughs> let, me t- let me tell you something. As a performer, as a performer, I'm telling you, we would all the performers. Performers, we would go crazy every time we had a sit down for the next for the next episode because we literally <laughs> would get past these scripts and our, you know my mouth would fall agape you know what I mean because you look at what was around the corner you know and uh, you're like I can't I can't believe they're, I can't believe they're doing this I can't yes. believe we're going, are we going there we're going there we're going there so you know the thing I, I take away is that uh, Mr. Singleton did something very very interesting he goes you know the 80s and for people growing up in that in that era you know. Particularly my part of the series, I deal, you know, our subject deals with a lot of the really dark things. But at the same time, Snowfall is a fun show because what he told, what, I remember what he mentioned is that he goes, listen, growing up in a place like South Central, it was, it was like that, that line from the book Tale of Two Cities. It was the best of times and it was the worst of times. You know, we were, there were people in very desperate situations, but people survived and made the most of it. And people still had fun and there were moments of lightness there. So I think that the, I think that the show strikes a good balance, you know. No, nobody here is demonized, and but at the same time, nothing is romanticized. You know, right. these are just people. These are people trying to do their best. Absolutely, Juan, you are such an accomplished actor. You know, your resume precedes itself, and we can't wait to see what other stuff you got in the pot cooking. But um, for all the aspiring actors that are out there that are in the trenches right now, they're trying to build themselves up. They're trying to get their resumes going. They're trying to get into these projects. What advice would you offer to any aspiring actors today? It depends on where they're working out of. So mm-hmm. you're based out in, the, in Atlanta. You're based out in the, you know, the southeast. Right. I Mostly my, my experience as a working actor has been involved in the two uh, main industry centers, which is New York and Los Angeles. So take mm-hmm. what I take what I say with a, with a grain of salt, but I think it can apply to any kind of regional area, right? Right, right? So you have to understand, you know, you have to understand that when you get to this city, you have to continuously keep busy. 
right? right? So what I would suggest if you're in New York, you know, don't don't sit back and expect that opportunities are going to fall in your lap. Every actor, you mm-hmm. should be really excited to be able to to do to create your art, to work your art, because that's what that's what really speaks to you. So as much as you can you know, sign up for play readings, get involved with other playwrights or other directors or other people that you know that are starting theater groups. You know, go out, do indie theater, write your own material, think about doing a showcase, be proactive. Nowadays, the name of the game is people that are really self-starters and people that are really fighting for yourself. And just remember to be your own advocate. You know, you have to be your own advocate in life because I don't think that anybody besides you or the people very closest to you are really going to advocate for you as much as you can. So uh, likewise, if you're in California, if you come out to Los Angeles and you're an aspiring actor, of course, in between auditions for, for pilots or in between auditions for guest stars or guest roles like I did, what would I, what would I do? Well, I'd get involved with young filmmakers, young screenwriters, buy a camp, buy a red cam, meet people that are doing a web series, just work and work and, and don't stop. The more that you work, the more that you'll be able to meet other people that have similar goals as you, and then you'll start to build a community. And what's really hard for performers, I think, is when they get to these areas, either New York or L.A. or Atlanta, of course, where there's a lot of work happening, or Florida or wherever, Mm -hmm. is that you can come to a city and you can kind of feel kind of adrift and kind of feel alone. You have to find your community of good people, of smart people, people that are creative, people that want to work, right? And don't hang around people that are just creative and they don't want to put in the work, Mm -hmm. right? That's right. And then on the last... And then the last thing I will say, this is me personally, this is me personally, is know your roots of your of your art. If you say that you want to work in film or you say you want to work in television, study the arts, study the greats, study John Cassavetti, study the new cinema of the 70s, watch John Singleton films. Mm-hmm. You know, something something that really impressed me by Mr. Singleton, I was speaking with him one day and I asked him, I asked him during a, a break, we were on a promotional thing in Austin, and I go, I go, Mr. Singleton, do you remember your first memories of film, you know, where, where this love came from? And he told me that, I don't think I'm, I think it's all right if I'm telling tales that it's out of school, but it's a very nice story. He told me that when he was young, his mother and his father would take him into downtown L.A. to these old dilapidated movie palaces that had been built in the 20s. At that time, everybody had, you know, that urban flight out of the cities and things like that, and these old theaters would play movies that were playing in the theaters like you would see up in Hollywood or up in the Valley, mm-hmm. but they were they, they would play five movies like in a row for, for very cheap money. You know, these were like dollar movie theaters for yeah. the people in that community. And his and what his parents did is that they took him to these movies and he would watch movie after movie after movie. And it would just mm-hmm. inundate with him. And that's where his love of the cinema uh, began. And as a result of that, when you speak to somebody like that, you know that what they do in life as an artist, it was it was made for them to do that because they have a real love of it. Right. He knows so much of film history. He knows so much of directors, and he knows the history of cinema and the developments of cinema. If you do theater, or if you do, or if you do film, or you do television, you have to love it. You have to love it, and you have to be in love with the art form because the more that you know, it's going to inform more of like your tastes, and you're going to understand. Why we do what we do now was built on, you know, the shoulders of incredible people, incredible artists before us. So know your roots, respect your beginnings. I think that, to me, that's a very important thing. Absolutely. I would definitely agree with that. Juan Javier Cardenas, you guys can catch him every week, every Wednesday on FX. Snowfall, 10 p.m. You guys set your reminders. Go do your TVR, all that good stuff. Juan, is there anything else that you're involved in? Anywhere else people can maybe get a little peek into your world? Uh, <laughs> I, you know, I'm, you know, you can uh, you can always find me. You can find me on uh, Instagram. Instagram handle is my full name, Juan Javier Cardenas. And up there, you know, you'll have all. I put every kind of update about any kind of appearance or any kind of thing that I'm involved in is there. That's kind of the best way to kind of see what's going on. Uh, but no, but other than that, I want to say thank you very much, Ash. Uh, I had a lot of fun <laughs> and much respect to, uh, Atlanta. I am from Florida, so I have a lot of connections to Atlanta, a lot of good people in Georgia and, uh, always love it when I'm there. Hopefully I'll be there soon. Someday. Absolutely. We'll, we'll look into that. We'll keep the connect. And uh, I right. really appreciate each and every one of you guys for downloading the show. Thank you so very much. Keep in mind, anyone to tell you that you can't do what you want to do, you look them square in the face and tell them, don't believe me, just watch. Watch what I do. Watch me make it happen. Watch me make history. All right? That's what we're here for. We're here. But, you know, social media is cool. It's nice. It's fun. But real life is so much better. Until next time, you guys. <laughs>